How's it going, everybody? Meathead Moto back for you. Yeah. How's it going, everybody? Meathead Moto back with you for another video to pump up your day with some motorcycle content. And I am currently just putzing along, not doing too much out here on the road glide. What I came on to talk about, I had a thought and it just went, whoo. And now I have no idea what I was gonna say. <coughs> I'm gonna be kind of riffing this idea off the top of my head because really I don't know how else or what to include on this list because a lot of it translates over into how we feel as beginner motorcyclists but I want to talk about how to get on a bagger like probably one of the most intimidating bikes you can get on you know when you think about the fact that like when we start out on motorcycles we always start out with reasonable motorcycles you know I started out on a CBR 250R which I was a big dude so I probably looked really big on that small bike but it was a reasonable bike to start with and I mean stereotypically there's so many people that start out on bikes that are like you know CBR 250s, 300s, 400s, 500s really nice compact bikes but we all kind of have the same fear when we get on motorcycles and it just gets that way too when you try to get on your bagger on a bagger for the first time I speaking from my experience when I first got on a bagger I had just my Dyna at the time which the a Dyna and a Softail are not small bikes by any means of the word either but they are still in leagues smaller and way less than most of your stereotypical gold wings road glides street glides Indian chieftains and challengers and Vaqueros, you know, name a bagger, they're all going to be like 700, 800 pounds or more. <clears throat> and it can be frankly quite intimidating if you only have experience on, say, a Dyna or a Rebel 500 or whatnot. Um, so I want to kind of give you guys my like first thoughts when it came to getting on a bagger and how... to get comfortable on a bagger because frankly a bagger doesn't quite do the same stuff as a small nimble bike can it has a much harder time doing it and it requires a lot more skill and comfort on these big bikes to be able to do similar things and I'll admit I'm not perfect either I'm not a hundred percent comfortable doing tight turns with this and by all means I should be practicing practicing and practicing but at the same time, I love riding too much on the country roads and the back roads to really, I guess, dedicate the time to it. Um, but the first thing that I want you all to know if you're going to get on a bagger for the first time is they are heavy. And it's, I know that's like a, oh, really moment. But here's the thing. It's still a motorcycle. If it's your very first time ever hopping on a bike, don't don't even attempt this this too much just too much but if you've got a few years under your belt you got to remind yourself it's still just a motorcycle you know how all the controls work you know how to get it up off the kickstand you know how it was when you were first looking for a bike and how you went about like getting comfortable riding that bike it's the same process on a bagger you know hop on it get it up off the kickstand balance it out pull it put the kickstand up you know move it from side to side while it's where it's sitting and just feel the weight and they're heavy at first at as at a zero mile per hour rating they're heavy they're big boys they got big cojones but when you actually get to riding them they handle just like your just like any other bike you push on the left side, the bike goes left. You push on the right side, the bike goes right. It doesn't feel heavier in corners than 
a Dyna or any of the other ones. It's just going to take a little bit more effort to get it into a corner. But that's again for if you have purchased a bagger and are now actually going and riding it, riding it, you know. I think my second biggest tip for you, if you're your first time getting on a bagger, is understanding that there's just a lot more going on up here in the front. Well, you know, generally with road kings and like road glides and all that, road kings are the exception. They don't have a whole lot going on there. So they're much more, much less intimidating than say a street glide or a road glide or a vaquero and all of them that have a lot of this going on. There's a lot of buttons, there's speakers, there's gauges and all that. All that is out here instead of nice and compact in a single cluster. So that can also be kind of intimidating. And that's something that you should probably like sit down and like play around with when you're not riding because that's a huge distraction at the same time while you're riding. Like I said, another tip is that they turn and do everything like a motorcycle. It's one down, five up, or one down, uh, you know, on most beggars, it's all six speed. I, would, I don't even know if there is a bagger that only has a five speed anymore. You know, brake is on the right side, the clutch is over here. It's, it's, uh, it's any other motorcycle. Twist the throttle to go fast, pull the brakes to go slow. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, I think the hardest part about beginning on a bagger is getting over the initial thought of dropping it or get, or it being too heavy and too slow. And realistically, they tune these bikes differently than the M8 Softtails. They want these to make more torque so that they get up and go just as easy as the Softtail does. It's the same thing that I was trying to get at before with the weight. If you're worried about dropping it, most, if not all, baggers have crash protection. Woo, that wind is ridiculous. Baggers have crash protection on them. Like mine came with these engine guards. And I don't think that, I think even the base street glide or the electric glide have crash bars. If not, future Zach will correct me. It'll keep, I've, I've laid this bike down once. I, I've set it on the crash bar. And you know what? It keeps everything that's critical safe. Bags are replaceable. You know, the crash bar itself is replaceable. It's gonna protect your legs if you go down and it's not gonna be really a big deal. In the end, I think the biggest thing to get over when it comes to hopping on a bagger and riding a bagger for your first time is just remind yourself that it's like any other motorcycle, just bigger. And with time, you stop seeing your Rebel 500 as being a heavy bike and you just think of it as a bike. It's the same thing that happens with a bagger. In fact, like, I think of every other bike now as so much lighter. And yet, I think of this as normal. Like, holy crap, those soft tails are so light. And in all reality, they're also 600 pound motorcycles. They are not light by any stretch of the word. But in comparison to this behemoth, they're fucking ballet dancers. This is, uh... This is a rugby player. So, in the end, to get over your fear of being intimidated by a bagger, you just gotta realize that, like, you are trained to ride a motorcycle. You've probably been riding a motorcycle for a number of years. It's just another motorcycle. And I would take it on a place or on a road that you're comfortable with, where you know the traffic and all that, and that'll make it even easier to ride it. Because if you know the road, you know the traffic level, all that good shit, it'll just make it that much easier to get comfortable. And you might end up seeing yourself on one going across the country in no time. But anyways, guys, I think that'll do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope it helps you get on a big old bagger bike here in the future. 
But until next time, guys, I'll see you later.